There are a lot of really bad arguments for Islam, and one of the worst arguments is, unfortunately, the most common. I get several messages a day from Muslims saying, how can Islam be the world's fastest growing religion if it's not the truth? This bit of reasoning is absurd on multiple levels. First, no Muslim would be impressed for a second if I said, with more than two billion adherents globally, Christianity is the world's largest religion, so it must be the truth. Somehow, arguments like this are only persuasive to Muslims if they're being used to promote Islam. So there's no consistency here whatsoever. Second, the unstated premise of the argument is that if a movement spreads rapidly, it must be true. And here again, no Muslim would ever agree with this premise if it weren't part of an argument for Islam. Communism was one of the fastest spreading movements in history. No Muslim would accept this as proof that communism is true. Third, you should only appeal to Islam's rapid growth as evidence for Islam if the reasons for Islam's rapid growth have something to do with Islam being true. So the question we should be asking is, why is Islam spreading rapidly? And many of the Muslims who use this argument seem to think that Islam is spreading because so many people are converting to it. Absolute nonsense. People do convert to Islam, but this has very little to do with the spread of Islam. So why is Islam the world's fastest growing religion? The Pew Research Report on the rapid growth of Islam explains, the main reasons for Islam's growth ultimately involve simple demographics. To begin with, Muslims have more children than members of the seven other major religious groups analyzed in the study. The primary reason Islam is growing so rapidly is high birth rates. As a general rule, if your group has more children than other groups, your group's going to grow faster. Pew Research provides a chart showing that wherever there's a significant Muslim population, Muslim birth rates are higher than non-Muslim birth rates. In Sub-Saharan Africa, the Muslim birth rate is 5.6 compared to 4.5 for non-Muslims. In the Middle East, it's 3.0 for Muslims, 2.6 for non-Muslims. In Asia and the Pacific, it's 2.7 for Muslims, 2.0 for non-Muslims. In North America, it's 2.6 for Muslims, 2.0 for non-Muslims. In Europe, it's 2.1 for Muslims, 1.5 for non-Muslims. Globally, the birth rate for Muslims is 3.1 compared to 2.3 for non-Muslims. This leads to a further question. Why do Muslims have more children than non-Muslims in Europe, America, Asia, the Middle East, and Africa? Well, the higher birth rates are connected to Islam's impact on women. In 2009, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development released a report on gender equality and social institutions. They rated countries around the world based on the opportunities women have for education or employment, laws to protect women from physical violence, the percentage of women who are married and or divorced by age 16, and so on. And they found that 11 of the 12 countries with the highest levels of discrimination against women were Muslim-majority countries. A similar study in 2014 conducted by the World Economic Forum using their own criteria concluded that 19 of the 20 worst countries in the world in terms of the gender gap between men and women were Muslim-majority countries. How is this relevant? Well, when women have fewer opportunities in life, they tend to start having children at a younger age. Fewer girls go to school, fewer go to college, there aren't many careers available to them, their parents marry them off at a younger age. Instead of starting a family in their 20s, they start a family in their early teens, and birth rates go up. So Muslims are simply having more babies than non-Muslims, and this is because Islam radically reduces opportunities for women. But there's more to the story. Pew Research notes that apostasy, leaving one's religion, isn't as common among Muslims as it is among non-Muslims. The report says, Meanwhile, religious switching, which is expected to hinder the growth of some other religious groups, is not expected to have a negative net impact on Muslims. Why are Muslims less inclined to switch religions? Here our Muslim friends will say, Because there's so much evidence for Islam. Wrong! Most Muslims can't give you anything remotely resembling a good argument for Islam, so evidence has little to do with this. The real reason Muslims are less inclined to leave Islam has to do with the kinds of psychological pressures Islam places on Muslims throughout their lives. In Sahih al-Bukhari 6922, we read Muhammad's command, Whoever changes his Islamic religion, kill him. 
In many Muslim countries, people who leave Islam face death, imprisonment, or at the very least persecution. Even in the West, where apostates are protected by law, Muslims often understand that if they leave Islam, they'll be shunned by their families. Islam also discourages critical thinking about Muhammad. Surah 4, verse 65 of the Quran, for instance, Allah declares, but know by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you, O Muhammad, judge in all disputes between them and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions and accept them with full submission. If you find in yourself any resistance against Muhammad's decisions, the Quran says you're not a real Muslim. Verses like this have led to generations of Muslims who are terrified of questioning anything Muhammad said. And the result of the suppression of critical thought is that many Muslims regard any argument for Islam, even an argument like, Islam is growing so fast it must be true, as entirely persuasive. So Muslims are trained and pressured throughout their lives not to think critically about Islam, and they know that there are severe repercussions for leaving Islam. Apart from this, Muslims are generally more sheltered from criticism than non-Muslims are. In Muslim countries, criticism of Islam is not tolerated and may be met with legal punishments or mob violence. But even in Western nations, criticism of Islam is not tolerated and will certainly be met with charges of racism and bigotry. Muhammad ordered his followers to kill people who made fun of him, and the Salman Rushdie affair, the murder of Theo Van Gogh, and the Charlie Hebdo massacre have convinced most critics to keep their mouths shut, thus further insulating Muslims from any sort of critical thinking about their religion. So now we understand why the Muslim population is growing so rapidly. But Islam isn't just growing rapidly in terms of global population, it's also growing rapidly in the West. Here again, however, this has little to do with conversions to Islam. Islam's main source of growth in the West is immigration. Why are so many Muslims fleeing Muslim countries and moving to the West? Surprise, surprise, Allah's commands to wage jihad against hypocrites and Muhammad's commands to kill apostates have led to endless instability in Muslim lands. There's always some group accusing other groups of being hypocrites or apostates and wanting to kill them for it. People who just want to live peaceful lives and provide a good future for their children decide to leave. And where do they go? They head west. In massive numbers. Putting all of this together, why is Islam growing globally? It's growing because of high birth rates combined with psychological conditioning. Why is Islam growing in the West? It's growing in the West because Islam tends to produce unstable countries that many people don't want to live in. Now to all my Muslim friends who tell me on a daily basis that Islam must be true because it's growing so rapidly, for the sake of clarity, you need to include the reasons for Islam's growth as part of your argument. So the argument should go something like this. Due to the teachings of Allah and Muhammad, women in Muslim countries have fewer rights and fewer opportunities than women in non-Muslim countries. This religious-based discrimination leads to higher birth rates and the massive numbers of children produced are psychologically conditioned to remain Muslims and are sheltered from any criticism of Islam. But even though these children will probably remain Muslim, they don't want to remain in Muslim countries because of the endless eruptions of violence by those who take Allah's commands to wage jihad seriously. Hence, they move to the West as fast as they can and Islam is spreading rapidly in countries kind enough to take them in. Surely a religion that does all this must be true. That's your argument, my Muslim friends. And it's the most popular argument for your religion. It's apparently the best you've got. Do you have any idea how this sounds to someone who hasn't been conditioned to mindlessly accept any argument for Islam? Do you even hear yourselves? Islam oppresses women, it threatens to behead people who leave Islam, and it produces countries that people just don't want to live in, so it must be true. If you think that's a good argument, there's obviously nothing I can do to change your mind. All I'll say is that many people would look at the exact same evidence and come to the opposite conclusion.